Welcome back to FSARP Conf. Um, our next speaker is um, Edgar Sanchez. Um, hey, and he's going to show you a quick demo. We'll chat a bit. Um, so Edgar, I have my, my usual first questions to everyone joining is, uh, where are you joining us from? Well, from Ecuador in South America in Quito. We are actually almost 3,000 meters high in the mountains. So. Oh. So this is the this is the this is the talk coming from the highest altitude. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Well, we'll have to we'll have to think about this for next year. Maybe um, if there's someone doing F sharp higher than three thousand meters, um, you should better get ready for next one. <laughs> come, to, come to think of it, I'm probably breaking a record right now. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. The, the highest F sharp talk so far. <laughs> the high. Yes, exactly. Cool. Um, so. Uh, we have a we have a demo from you coming uh, coming up. Is this something you've done for fun or for a project or for a demo? Uh, well, uh, at the beginning for fun, but then I've used it to teach uh, a few F sharp concepts. So so I've done it a couple of times with uh, with good success. Let's let's hope it happens again today. All right. Well then, I'll switch to your I'll switch to your screen. Okay. And if you can uh, turn off your video so that it doesn't uh, take all the space here, all right. Mm -hmm. I'll turn off mine and I'll be around listening if you if you need something. Cool. Great. Thank you, Thomas. Here you go. So thank you, Thomas, and welcome everybody. In uh, some uh, thirty minutes or so that are coming, I'm going to talk about um, what I think is a nice application of F Sharp and artificial intelligence. And uh, it's about describing images to visually impair people with, for people with uh, low vision, you know. Uh, you can see there my, uh, my contact. I'm uh, part of the F-Sharp Foundation. And uh, let me start with the uh, inspiration for this talk. And uh, the inspiration is actually this very nice guy, uh, Sakib Sheikh. And uh, a couple of years ago, I, uh, I was in a, in a conference where I saw this video. I'll just show you a minute or two of the video. So let's get started here. I'm Sakib Sheikh. I lost my sight when I was seven. And shortly after that, I went to a school for the blind. And that's where it was introduced to talking computers. And that really opened up a whole new world of opportunities. I joined Microsoft 10 years ago as a software engineer. I love making things which improve people's lives. And one of the things I've always dreamt of since I was at university was this idea of something that could tell you at any moment what's going on around you. I think it's a man jumping in the air doing a trick on a skateboard. Okay, and that was, that was the moment, my wow moment, you know? How did they do that? How, how long did it take to, to work this thing out? And it's so, so useful and so cool. And of course, by the time also, I've already worked a little bit with F-Sharp and I started to wonder whether we can do something like this with, with F-Sharp. And uh, so I started to play a few nights, just uh, checking out. And uh, a possible backend for this scenario, and let me, let me uh, tell you that it, this is, just my uh, my idea how to do it. Probably the guys that do it professionally do it in a far different, far uh, more efficient way. But uh, for me, it's a it's a number of steps slowly transforming an input to the desired output. In our case, we start with an image. Uh, then we use some sort of vision service or um, something like that that transforms the image into a JSON response. This JSON response got uh, tags, uh, descriptions, statistics about the certainty of the interpretation of the image, and so on and so forth. Uh, when we have this JSON response, we uh, kind of transform in uh, or extract, sorry, the specifically the description text. Okay, and once we have the description text, uh, we we want to translate it. Actually, in 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 Shakib. Um, uh, app or sample, he, 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 he doesn't use the translation because he uh, speaks English. 
but uh, you know, I mean, I'm in South America and we speak Spanish uh, down here, of course, and there's uh, a lot of people that speaks a lot of other languages. So I added an additional step, step three, I take the description text in English, uh, then translate it. Then the interesting thing is that the translation service gives me back the answer in XML. So uh, I already have to deal with JSON and now XML. The fourth step is to uh, extract just the translated text from the XML. And then we are almost there. I take the test, uh, the text, I uh, use a speech service to convert this text in a WAV or MP3 file, uh, a sound by the way. And finally, I just have to play the sound. I just have to play the sound, okay? But uh, these six steps, uh, I, I, I ask you to start thinking if your favorite language, whichever it is, uh, C Sharp, Java, Python, uh, JavaScript, uh, how many lines of code would it take to do this, uh, these six steps? And uh, of course, we are going to try and do it in, uh, in F Sharp live. And so much so live that actually I'm going to start from zero. How about that? I'm live. Uh, so I'm uh, creating uh, right now a folder. And then in this folder, I'm starting code. Okay. So here we are in, co in code. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to create an F sharp project, a console project. I just need that, which will reside in this very folder. And the name is going to be, uh, I, I don't know, image narrator, for example. Let's do this. And uh, so code is just setting up the project quickly. So as uh, while it does that, um, of course, coming back to our steps, I'm not uh, even trying to start from zero, we are standing in the shoulders of giants. So the first thing we are going to try and use is Azure Cognitive Services. And you've got the URL here. So Azure Cognitive Services has got a vision API that does exactly, among many other things, takes an image and generates a text interpretation of it. Uh, it's, it, it also has got a translation service. And finally, it's got a, a speech service. So we are going to use those three services from the plethora of um, services that Cognitive Services has got. Well, also I have to deal with this uh, extract text from JSON, extract text from XML and things like that. And uh, for doing that, we are going to use F Sharp type providers. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about type providers in a, in a few minutes when we are working with the code. And finally, the, the, the final element of trying to work out our solution is to use the interactive facilities of F Sharp. For that, we of course are using code, although we could use Visual Studio as well without problem. We are using the awesome Ionite extensions for code. And, uh, and uh, last but not least, of course, we are using the, the F Sharp language and it's a uh, REPL or better, it's an extended version of a REPL that Ionite provide us. So uh, let me go back to our, um, to our uh, project. It's already initialized. Uh, here is uh, my, my project, which is right now empty, except for some, uh, some uh, template files, nothing else. And another thing I'm needing here is um, the F sharp type provider. So uh, I'm going to use a packet and add the uh, F sharp data package which uh, provide us the F Sharp type providers. So right now, live, we are downloading everything we need. Remember, we started from zero. And uh, while that happens, let me go back to, first thing first, as I said before, we are going to use the Computer Vision API. And uh, the Computer Vision API, it gets an image URL and gives us back a um, um, somewhat complex JSON file. You, you just see a part of it in, in the right side. Uh, so what we have to do is to, is to uh, construct a very specific HTTP package. It's documented here. Let me see quickly. It should be like here, yeah, right here. So you can see this is, this is the, computer, the Computer Vision API documentation. And you can see 
exactly what are you supposed to send as a URL, as, um, as parameters in the URL itself, and then information you should send in headers and in the body. So you have to, uh, you have to carefully build uh, this HTTP package. Uh, let me show you how, how we can build a package like this using F Sharp and F Sharp data. So let's go back to our file, here it is. And uh, um, well, just to check out that uh, everything went, went fine, I'm going to go to the packages. And uh, sure enough, there, here we have an F Sharp data uh, folder and inside of it, a lib folder. And finally, uh, this little guy here, fsharp.data.dll. This is the type providers assembly. This is all we are needing above uh, F-sharp to do all our work. So once I'm sure about this, I'm just going to uh, create a, a new file. I'm going to call it, let's have fun.fsx. And we're going to work. Uh, let me see. First thing first, as we are using interactively that, uh, that package, the DLL, uh, with this line, I'm uh, loading the DLL and so having in this interactive, interactive um, environment available all the functions that we have there. Next thing is what guys the VC. We're just defining a couple of things. Let me show you. There you go. We are opening a couple of uh, a couple of um, namespaces. This is the URL of for the for the vision service, and this is the key that I have to use to to have access to the service. And here, finally, I've got an image here. Just the URL for an image. Just execute it quickly. And the the thing that really matters to us is this one. Let me show you. There we go. We are calling the request string function, which is part of the F -sharp, F Sharp data package. We are giving it the URL. Then we are building the, uh, the, and the query arguments. And basically, we are giving it uh, query argument visual features with this value. All right? Then we've got a couple of headers. First of all, uh, a first header will be the content type, and it's going to be JSON. And the second header is going to be this. This is just documented. This is the name of the header that has my key to access the service. So we've got a couple of headers. Uh, then we are telling it that we are using the, um, the post method. And finally, our body. Okay. For building the body, I'm giving it the image URL, first of all. Then, I, then I, I'm formatting it nicely. If uh, you're wondering what I'm doing there, what I'm doing there is basically building, excuse me, we are basically building these um, small um, JSON file or JSON string, excuse me. So that's what we do here. We just build this, the, uh, the string with the image URL. And finally, this text request function uh, creates the body by, by, for us. So if I call this one function, we are, oh, wait, wait a second. I didn't, I think I didn't execute this yet. Yes, there we go. And then let me do this again. There we go. So right now we are uh, executing the function and uh, we, the Vision API already answered us we can check out this JSON response. One nice thing of this function is it already took the body from the answer and give it back to me as a string, just a string. Well, and now comes the nice things because, uh, you know, as JSON happens to be, uh, sometimes it's very complex to get what we need. And uh, deep buried inside of it is this description. And by the way, let me show you the, uh, let me show you the image we are dealing with this image, okay? This is Quito, the city I live, I live in. As I told to Thomas, we are almost 3,000 meters above sea level. That's some, I think, 10,000 feet above sea level. And that's an image about a volcano that happened to uh, spit some ashes a couple of years ago, okay? 
So uh, that's the image. Let's go back here. And it says it's a church with a mountain in the background. Okay, um, I think uh, uh, close enough to the real thing. Uh, the interesting thing is that the image happens to be somewhat complex. And actually, uh, let me go back here to the documentation. It's here. We've got a sample, as you can see here, from the, uh, the, uh, the kind of answer we can get from the JSON file. So all I'm going to do right now is create a new file. If you allow me, where we are here, right here, and uh, well, I'm going to create and uh, let's call it sample.json, right? And save my file there. Great. Why, why I'm doing this? Because I'm about to use a type provider. Let me take just a couple of uh, files here. Or a couple of lines, and, uh, and let me explain them to you. Okay, here we go. This is the uh, the vision provider. Or this is the type that we're going to build. We are going to use the JSON provider, and JSON provider will take a sample. In my case, the sample is the file that we are just we just created. Remember, sample.json. There we go. And, uh, and uh, once I, I execute this line, what the JSON provider does is analyze the sample file, in this case, the sample file, and it creates a number of classes, a number of types that allow me to work in a more simple and natural way uh, with, the, uh, with the answer, okay? Basically, what I'm telling it, remember that the response was this, um, uh, this JSON string, I'm using line 22 to create an object using the provider, an object that has the um, the answer, but in a object oriented, uh, in an object oriented way. Actually, for example, we can check the tags, and these are the tags associated. You can see that we can have here things like. Um, uh, IntelliSense and things like that. It just works. And uh, it says outdoor, mountain, uh, sheep, uh, I don't know, snow, etc. Okay. And I can get the description that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in in this deep buried element on here. There we go. And the description is a church with a mountain in the background. So instead of fighting with uh, with this complex JSON file here, we just created a class uh, on the fly, and this class is able to get quickly and easily to the uh, to the element I need. So we've got the description. We're going fine. Now next next thing is the translation, and for that I've got another service. Let me copy a few lines and and then explain you again what's going on. There we go. Uh, this is the uh, URL of the translation services from uh, from community services again. This is my key for that service. Just execute this one. Nothing, nothing interesting in there. And um, this is again a call to the uh, request string. I'm sending the URL. Now I have to send the description. Remember, the description is um, is uh, well, well the uh, the interpretation of the image in the text argument, and I want to translate from English. For example, I'm going to translate to French, let's say. Okay, and uh, I need just one header. It's uh, simpler than the than the previous one. The idea is the same. And right now, I'm calling the service, and I've got the translation, which is in principle a good thing, except that the translation is in XML. In this case, it's a very simple XML, and I, and I can go and try to get the text inside the XML, but in, uh, in other scenarios, it tends to be a really complex, a really complex uh, XML structure. So we can use another provider. Let me take it right here. There we go. Again, I give it a sample string, 
which is very simple, as I said before, okay, and create the provider. And once I, I've got the provider, like, like in line 44, I'm just parsing the XML, okay? Let me execute this again. This is a look at execution. And there you go. I've got the translation. And in Eglise, avec, in Montaigne, I don't know. My French is really bad. If Matthias is seeing this presentation, probably is going crazy right now <laughs> with my French. And we're almost there. Uh, let, let's go back to the let's go back to the PowerPoint uh, for a while. Uh, we already transformed the image in JSON. We took the JSON and make it a text. Uh, then we took the text and translated it in XML. We took the XML and, and make it a text. And finally, we need to transform it in a byte array, in a sound. So for that, we use uh, one last service, which is again part of uh, cognitive services. Let me just copy these couple of lines once again. Uh, this is the service, the, UR the service URL, and we are going to execute this, but th there's a couple of things that are different right now. Up, up until now, when I call services, I always used request a string. And remember, request a string takes the body of the response, takes out the body, and uh, give it back to me as a string, ready to consume. But right now, we've got a different situation because the service doesn't give me back uh, a text or a string. It gives me back a binary file in, uh, embedded in the body. So I cannot use, I can't use um, uh, request a string anymore. I just use request. And when I use request, like here, again, I give the URL, a couple of headers. Uh, ah, by the way, should use French here because we want uh, uh, the spoken language to be French. Following my example, let's uh, execute it. Oh, sorry about that. I need this line first and then uh, let's execute this. And there we go. And what you get right now, it's actually a whole HTTP response file. And from that HTTP response file, I have to take the, um, the binary rate from the body, which is part of this guy. But, and here comes a very interesting part of uh, F-sharp pattern matching. Let me copy uh, these few lines, uh, these last few lines right here. And the thing is, the body actually could have two different things. If everything goes just right, uh, I will get um, a binary array. But if something goes wrong, I will get a text, a text with, uh, with uh, some kind of uh, error mass message or something like that. Let me just write this in uh, uh, error message, for example. And uh, what we are doing is taking the body property and then asking, is it a text? And if it's a text, I've got right here in the text uh, in the text binding uh, the message. Or is it binary? And if it's binary, I've got right here the array. We are using a discriminated union. And if it's a binary, uh, all I'm doing is um, uh, just creating a memory stream uh, in memory file, if you like, with the bytes and then calling these functions on player to play the sound. So let's see how it goes. Okay, I think I've got a little problem with my sound. It happens from time to time in this, in this computer. Give me just a second to, to check out. Small configuration in my machine. Second, there we go. Now let's try again the play. Let's see. At church with a mountain in the background. Uh, did you hear that? That was? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> great, I, I just tried. At church with a mountain in the background. Okay. And now, of course, the, the very nice thing is that instead of using uh, 
the French translation. I can try to uh, translate it to Spanish so I can check it out. So I just, and, 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 and. of course, then I want to, to, to listen to it in Spanish, of course. And uh, let's try again just these few lines up until here, I guess. So I'm calling in the service and I'm getting the, uh, the new speech file. And then I'm executing it again. Let's hear it. Okay, and that's uh, and that's my uh, Spanish translation. Um, so as as you can hear, we have pretty much covered this number of steps that involves uh, working with JSON files, sending and receiving uh, HTTP packages, XML files, uh, working with byte arrays and things like that. And uh, we have we have done all of it, and uh, including blank lines, uh, something like 60, 65 lines of code. And more importantly, we've done it uh, interactively. When I uh, originally did this, I had to do a lot of a lot of trial and error. Does the service expect this this parameter or not? What sticks out the order of uh, the headers? Well, although headers doesn't matter, but for example, the XR order in which I, I have to call the different services. And uh, so it was far more fun and faster to, to work in this interactive, in this trial and error way up until we find the, uh, up until we find the, um, the correct solution. And once, we, and once you've got the solution, of course, you can put all of these in a more seriously structured file and put it in an executable file or maybe put it in a service that uh, that wraps all the all the calls and transformations we are doing here and uh, so um, uh, it's it's interesting the fact that doing all this work as I said in the uh, in the description of the talk um, could talk uh, could be probably a, a master's degree thesis, and now it's just a it's a matter of use a number of pre-existing services. So I hope this has given you a few ideas about the power of the language and also the power of service of the of the the things you've got in in uh, cognitive services. Um, You've got all uh, my uh, my uh, contact information there again, and also if you want to be part of the F Sharp Foundation, which is free, you've got the URL there to get to become member. And now I'm open to questions and uh, comments. All right. Thank you so much for uh, for doing this. Can you turn on your video now, just so that we can we can see you? Let me see if I can do that. Uh, okay. There we go. Uh, all works. Yeah. So that was really an epic demo in just 65 lines of code. I'll have a look, <laughs> see what uh, see what questions do we have. Uh, there's a comment on YouTube. Awesome presentation. Thank you, Edgar, which I agree with. That was an awesome presentation. Um, I don't see any questions here. I do have one sort of. Just as a, as a follow up, um, so you've written all this code nicely interactively. Um, okay. What would you, how would you sort of go about turning it into some sort of application that people can, I don't know, download on their phone or um, install on their machines? Sort of, what's the step from interactive to application? Okay. The easiest one is how to install it in my own machine. And uh, remember, at the beginning, I created this Imagine Narrator project. And it's got this uh, main file. Actually, we're thinking about a console application. And uh, all I, I, I should have to do is to put this 60-something uh, lines of code in a function. OK. And uh, something, actually, something like this. Let's just give an idea about it. Uh, <laughs> let let uh, image to uh, narration. Let's give it a name and uh, an URL here, right? And uh, we get this code here, right? And uh, pretty much 
that would that's create, that's... yeah, that would create a function that do, does that. And then all I'll do here is something like this image uh, to narration and uh, let's say rb sub zero. Of course, I'm being really lame here because I'm not checking any errors. So I, I'll need some trial, fail with and things like that. And also check that I, I, I do get a, an argument. But when I compile this, it will generate an executable file that does uh, all the work. Actually, we created a command line utility, come to think of it. And also, except probably for the very few lines here that depend on the on the sound player um, Windows function, all the rest will work will work just right in Linux, for example. I just have to check out for the the the, the way of doing the sound playing in Linux, and this would be also a Linux a Linux uh, utility. So that, that's give us a general idea how I would do it. Uh, Sounds good. Two, Yep. Okay. <laughs> all right. So um, I think we're we've used all our time. Thank you very much, Edgar, for joining us. Thanks for um, contributing uh, the the largest altitude talk at FSRFConf ever attempted. And uh, hope to see you, hope to see you somewhere again. Um, and if people have questions for Edgar, uh, follow us on Twitter. Follow him on Twitter. Join Slack. Uh, you can get the source code there as well, presumably. Great. Thank you for having me. Have a and, great day. Um, Bye. Stay with us. We will be, we will be continuing in a minute uh, with a talk by John Azaria on quantum. Mm -hmm.